It was a busy weekend for Swiss government and regulators as they were urging the two biggest Swiss banks to come to an agreement to save the confidence in the Swiss banking system and reduce the panic in the economy. Last week we saw troubles in the US with the fallout of three banks, Silvergate Bank, Silicon Valley Bank and Signature Bank. But this week the trouble has crossed the Atlantic and now reached Europe. Credit Suisse, the second largest bank in Switzerland with a history of 167 years, has been sold to its long-time rival and the largest Swiss bank UBS for 3 billion dollars. It was a historic day in Switzerland and also the first major global banking acquisition since the 2008 financial crisis. This deal marks the end of an era for one of the oldest and strongest Swiss institutions. The Swiss government officials took the center stage of the deal as both UBS and Credit Suisse were reluctant to tie the knot. The deal is also backed by a massive Swiss guarantee. The merger was not easy and almost unthinkable due to the size of both banks. But the aftermath is also not going to be easy. On one side, shareholders' money is lost as the bank was sold much less than its market value, and there was no participation of shareholders in this deal. On other side, bondholders are also considering legal action after additional tier one or eighty one bonds were wiped out in this emergency sale. In today's video, we will see what happened behind this historic merger of two biggest Swiss banks and the role of Swiss government. What happened to bondholders and shareholders, and finally the global impact of this acquisition. So, if you are interested to know more about this unthinkable acquisition in Swiss history, then stick around. If you are someone from the banking industry or have interest in the finance side, you might know about Credit Suisse and its position in the last decade. Credit Suisse was the worst performing bank out of all the globally systematic important banks. Credit Suisse has been criticized for many bad decisions, overlooked risk management, money laundering and abrupt changes in the management. Credit Suisse stock had hit an all-time low and lost 90% of its value in last one year and 99% from its all-time high. If you are interested to know more about Credit Suisse and the corruption in the bank, I'll leave another video link in the i button. The point is that the collapse of Credit Suisse was inevitable. It just needed a push and this time the push came from across the border. Credit Suisse was already on the declining side, and now after the failure of three U.S. banks and the annual report released by Credit Suisse last week, opened the secrets of material weakness of the bank. It worried the investors, and Credit Suisse's stock hit hard. The bank was on the brink of collapse. Even a $54 billion bailout from the Swiss Central Bank could not save it, so there were not many options. One option was to sell it to the Deutsche Bank, who was interested, but the Swiss will never sell their banks to the Germans. Another option was to nationalize it, but that would have been more expensive call, based on the competition and the low confidence in the bank after what has happened in Credit Suisse in last decade. Then the last option was to sell it to the competitor by making a deal too good to be refused. So the obvious choice was UBS. But the sheer size of UBS is already raising questions regarding the balance of power between the government and a private sector bank. But this week two of March madness of the global banking crisis is not done yet, and there is a lot more to the story. But before moving further, if you have enjoyed the video so far, please smash on the like button, and if you are interested to know more on the business stories, please subscribe to our channel and click on the bell notification so that you never miss a new video from us. Thank you. You might have seen or heard about many mergers and acquisitions, but this acquisition is another kind of story. Where the sellers and buyers were not ready, but the third party, in fact, the government wanted a deal to happen. We have seen many times when two companies want to merge and the government refuses the deal. AT&T and T-Mobile was one such example. Also, shareholders had no say in this deal. The sale of Credit Suisse happened without shareholders' vote. It's against Swiss law, but when a bailout has to happen, laws can be changed. An excerpt from the Credit Suisse press release on the deal says. In consideration of the unique circumstances affecting the Swiss economy as a whole, the Swiss Federal Council is issuing an emergency ordinance tailored to this particular transaction. Most importantly, the merger will be implemented without the otherwise necessary approval of the shareholders of UBS and Credit Suisse to enhance the deal certainty. Well, many people would have voted against the deal from both sides. They were rivals for a long time after all, and that's why people are referring to this deal as a shotgun wedding. This deal was an all-share deal of 3.25 billion dollars, which is less than 50% of Credit Suisse market cap on Friday. Apart from this, the Swiss government is also providing a 9 billion dollar backstop to UBS for the risk it is undertaking. 
The Swiss National Bank will also provide more than $100 billion of liquidity to UBS to help facilitate the deal. Under the terms of agreement, UBS will take control of Credit Suisse wealth management, asset management and Swiss domestic banking operations. And according to UBS, the combined bank will have a staggering $5 trillion of invested assets, making it bigger than the competitors like Goldman Sachs and Dasher Bank. The transaction also obtained a pre-agreement from Swiss regulators. Have you ever seen a deal executing this fast? Well, that's why we said it's an acquisition at another level. From the story so far, we can see that this is not a normal acquisition between two companies. As the transaction got pre-agreement from Swiss regulators, the shareholders' approval was not required. It will bypass the six-week approval period that is normally allotted to shareholders to evaluate the deal. After the deal, Credit Suisse shareholders will receive one UBS share for 22.48 Credit Suisse shares. Although this acquisition was applauded by other central banks in the world, including the Federal Reserve and the Bank of England, as a preservative measure to avoid the potential banking crisis. But the Credit Suisse bondholders are not happy, as the bank's 81 or the additional tier 1 bonds were wiped out. This loss on 81 convertible bonds which were created in the aftermath of 2008 is the biggest loss ever in European 81 market, which is the 275 billion market. Before this, the largest 81 bond loss was $1.3 billion in 2017, where Banco Popular was failed and was absorbed by the Santander Bank. People who don't know about the 81 bonds, these are also called contingent convertible bonds. They are high yield bonds and are structured to convert into equity or to be written off if the issuer's capital falls below a certain threshold, and often termed as risky instrument. Now the bondholders are filing a lawsuit after the bond value is zeroed out in this deal. But this is not all. Now after 81 bonds are wiped out in this deal, it might make it hard for other banks to sell risk-bearing bonds in the future. It will also raise a question on the future of the 81 asset class as a source of future bank risk capital in Europe and other places. It might increase the risk of a potential bank run as well in Europe. However, this acquisition seems to be resolving the problem from a Swiss government perspective, but the failure of Credit Suisse might create more fears from an international perspective. In the US, First Republic Bank will be highly impacted by this. S&P Global has downgraded First Republic's credit rating for the second time in the past week. Last week, 11 major banks stepped up to save the First Republic and infused $30 billion. Well, only time can tell if this infusion will resolve the institution's liquidity issues or not. But till then, it's on a ticking time bomb. Another major issue will be with the full-time employees working in both the companies. Both companies had the same asset management, investment management and the larger wealth management divisions. So while the merger will take place, there will be significant layoffs. Now these are the temporary problems. Not that it's not significant. Of course it is. Losing a job in this market is a very big concern. But another major concern is not learning from the mistakes. And it's because the system is more reactive than being proactive. Don't you think that some of the downfalls of these major banks could have been avoided? After the FTX crisis, every finance literate person knew the position of Silvergate and Signature Bank. SVB bank collapse was also because of the side effects from these banks. The position of Credit Suisse was also not unknown. Everyone knew about it. The problem is that instead of addressing the risk, it is being reshuffled within the system. It happened in 2008 and it's happening again. With money printing, problems are getting pampered instead of restraining. But it won't stop here. More money will be injected into the system in the name of emergency lending. As per JP Morgan, the Fed will likely inject about $2 trillion into the US banking system to ease the liquidity crunch faced by the banks. The Bank Term Funding Program or BTFP by the Fed is a silent killer, where the depositor's money will be secured in the name of FDIC insurance, but the money in the bank itself will be chewed by the inflation. So, that's about the end of another bank, this time across the border. Let us know what you think about the Credit Suisse downfall. Are we done with this March madness of banking collapses or the risk is not done yet? Let us know in the comments below. If you have enjoyed this video, please do like it. If you are new here, please subscribe to our channel and help us grow. We are trying to bring more amazing business stories to you. Also, let us know what other business stories you would like to see. With that said, I shall catch you in the next one. Thank you and have a nice day.